For this month's infield, I want to show you guys something a little different. Because we focus a lot, because it's, you know, pulls and whatnot. We focus a lot on, you know, seating the pull, structuring this, that, and the other. Um, but what gets lost a little bit in terms of example is some of the early game stuff, some of the escalation stuff, especially physical escalation stuff, because in my style of game, oftentimes I don't get that physical. Uh, so what I wanted to show you this month is a couple of sets that are um, makeouts fairly early on, just so you can see from the open to the makeout to the number closes, because um, this is gonna look a lot more like a lot of the sets you're gonna do. And there are times when you just won't be able to pull for various reasons, you know, logistical, her friends, those kind of things. Um, and this is what good sets in those contexts might look like, all right? So with that said, let's look at the sets. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys are like fucking trouble in the best possible way. I love it. Oh, we're trouble in the best possible way? I think I mean, so. I think it's a compliment. I mean, I, would so. I wouldn't walk up and insult somebody. What kind of man do you think I am? You know, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah? I mean, Come here, what is your name? What is your name? You do? Yeah. That's Thank a very, that's a very like, almost arrogant name, but in a very cute way. But I'm not lying, that's really my first name. I believe you. you do? I don't think you could make that up. If you lied to me, it'd be like Mary Jane or some shit. It would shit. be so hard to lie. You are amazing. I am Todd. C O D D. Todd, nice yes. to meet you. These are your friends, I assume. How are you so like sweet and innocent? And uh, so a couple of things I want you to notice. Uh, notice I went in something high energy and impactful. It's not just like, you know, casually walking up and greeting them because this is a kind of a high energy environment. It's not like the craziest, loudest club you've ever seen, but there's, there's people dancing, the music's a little bit on the louder side, etc. Um, so you have to make yourself um, noticed, right? You have to get her attention. That's a primary thing. The other thing, and this is a minor point, you may have noticed right at the very, very start, I was sitting kind of like this, looking at the situation. Um, for a lot of guys who are beginners, I say just go no matter what, right? Don't hesitate. If you want to talk to her, just go do it. As you get a little more advanced, there will be times where there's an optimal time to go and a not optimal time to go. And so at that moment, I was waiting for a situation when the, the logistics were such that I could get straight into the group without having to deal with quite as much bullshit. So I was looking for that, that proper moment. Now notice I didn't wait very long, right? I didn't sit there for like 20 minutes waiting for that, right? But I spent like, you know, a few seconds just checking and making sure that I got in in the highest percentage way, okay? And that's something you'll learn to develop as you get more advanced. So like worldly and like sassy at the same time? Um, because I've gone through shitty relationships and now I'm not gonna be in another one. If you want to be honest, truth. So I've learned to be my best self. Fair enough. Literally, that's it. I'm I like that. That means, that means like if, we, if anything happens, I'll have trouble getting rid of you. That's good. Exactly. Like if you want to like, move on, you're like, that's fine, then it's fine. I love it. Yeah. Dude, fair enough. Or you can just have a drink tonight and, you know, see if we enjoy each other's company. I'm pretty okay with that, too. I'm pretty okay with that. Yeah? Yeah. You cannot give me that look. I invented that look. That is, that is, that is, that is the look I used in, like, fifth grade to get into and out of trouble. So a lot of the lines you heard should kind of speak for themselves, you know, push pull lines, disqualifiers, that kind of stuff. What I really want to point out to you here though is number one, you notice like the loud music and we're kind of shouting over it's it's even a little bit hard to hear. Um, and in that environment, I'm gonna stack a lot more gamey moves next to each other. Right? In a very quiet environment, it's gonna be very conversational, very chill, very relaxed. And there won't be a lot of like high octane material or, or so many emotional spikes stacked next to each other. There still will be the emotional spikes, but they'll be spread out. Here, because of the nature of the, um, the venue, right? Uh, there's gonna be a little bit more of, I need to maintain the intensity. It's an intense venue. I need to be as engaging or more so than whatever else is going on, okay? So this will look a little bit different than what you may have seen if you've seen me do some day game approaches, for example. I am a little tempted to take you on a little New Orleans adventure, but I'm a little, you know, I'm shy, you know, anyone with this Dukes as a last name is so much more sophisticated than I. Huh? Do not be shy, one. Do you know what? This is literally my first night here ever, so I'm going to be a I have one, one blend.
that even better? We just bring all your friends, have them meet all my friends, and let's just like make a crazy party. Alright, I got my four girlfriends. Can you entertain them all? I think I'm uniquely qualified with my group for that, actually. Interesting yeah. that up. Yeah. I might have, I don't know, this area, I might have the four hottest men in New Orleans. And then, and then there's me, but you know, you have to put up with me. I mean, like, besides here, I don't know, it's funny. I feel like, no, I want this girl, I'm gonna go for it, so. I think it's out. It's true. Fair enough, I'm not used to having to work for girls, but you know, I suppose, if you're sweet enough. I mean, if they're worth it, you should, so. Yeah. <laughs> So what we have here is a bit of a logistical fiasco, right? So she's with a bunch of friends. Her friends are not gonna leave her. They're very clicky. Their first day, they just got in, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the logistics just are not good, right? And it's very clear she likes me because she's like, take my number, take my number, take my number, text me, let's hang out, take my number, right? She's very insistent, but we have the friends problem. So um, I could just take her number, but uh, this is a you know, New Orleans Mardi Gras situation. I consider this similar to like a Vegas situation where you're not really going for numbers you wanna pull for the most part. Um, so I don't really want to take a number. Although to be fair, this, this did follow up, so um, that's always good. Um, but what I was really trying to do is problem solve it. What are the other options, right? And so what I tried to do here is I tried to introduce her friends to all my friends, right? Um, and that went okay-ish a bit, but the problem here was that her friends and my friends didn't really get off, like hit it off very well. Um, and so that became the deal breaker. Had it worked out that they happened to get along or that her friends were not quite as all over the place and distractible as they turn out to be, which was really the problem, um, then it could have worked. But going for that solution and trying to actually pull that night is gonna be massively more high percentage than just settling for the number at the first time it's offered, all right? So I wanna encourage you guys, a lot of guys, they go in and they're what I call the phone number bandit, which is they just go in and they're like, get the number real fast before she decides she doesn't like me, or get the number real fast before I mess it up. Um, that's not really, a, it's, it's, a, it's a victory, but it's not really the full victory, right? A lot of guys, they have pretty good sets and their problem isn't that they're not getting good good interactions, it's that they're not making enough of the good interactions, not turning their good interactions into great interactions. So I want you guys to be a little bit pushy for that. I want you to um, not just settle for the like on paper win, but think to yourself like the real win is sex. What's the, what's the best odds of sex? Even if it leads to being too pushy and a rejection sometimes, um, the, the only real victory is the final victory. I know you have a devil in you. Because you kiss like a devil. That is so true. I'm not gonna lie about that. I'm a little bit of both. At heart, I'm who I am, but sexually, I am who I am too. What if, you know, when we hang out tonight, tomorrow, whenever down the line, I just sort of tease, torment, and, um, Otherwise, tempt you. I am okay with doing that. But that just means you have to come visit me. Or you can come visit me in New York as well. I've heard it's a I good mean, place I, to visit. I, I've only been to New York once, so I'm down to go whenever. So I'll hear from you tomorrow. Yes. You what, what? I'll hear from you tomorrow. I did come talk to you in the first place. As far as I know. I'll hear from you tomorrow. Good. Where are you sitting? Um, somewhere near the French Quarter, but I'm not quite sure. Me too. Yeah? Yeah, maybe we'll grab a... Maybe we'll grab a quick drink in the afternoon before everybody grabs ten quick drinks. Sounds great. Sounds great. I like teasing you. I am a little bit. I'll be in New York soon. I have too many friends there to not go. Really? I feel like... You should call me tomorrow. I'll come. What? Huh? Oh, I thought you were bringing me. I thought you were going to introduce me. I thought you were going to introduce me. Like, look what I found. He's amazing. Are you all jealous yet? Right. Will do, will do. <laughs> text me tomorrow. I will. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a picture of us so that no 
matter how drunk you get, you'll remember how hot we are. I'm gonna remember. I'll take a picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So here's the deal with, you know, anything regarding flaking. No matter how good your set is, you could have a flake, right? But when you have the girl, call me tomorrow, call me tomorrow, text me, take my number, call me tomorrow. Your odds of getting, you know, her to not flake certainly go up. Now, anything can happen, right? She can get blackout drunk and forget you. Um, her friends can hang out, end up at some party. She can end up sleeping with some other guy later in the night. Like, shit can happen, okay? But that said, um, when you get a girl chasing like that and trying that hard to make sure that you're gonna see her, it's a pretty good indicator that you ran a pretty good set. All right, so now let's look at the second interaction. Hello. I can't do this. You're like, you're like the fun one. Yes, that's yes. right. Yep, that's me. If you're the fun one, yep, we can hang out. Yep. That said, okay, I, I yeah. also think you're trouble, but it's- I am trouble and I am fun, so what, that's right. What is your name? How about you? Uh, my name is not- yeah, that's good. What's your name? Really? Yeah, that is good. I'm glad, I'm glad you like my name, not me. Yeah. That means you're not entirely narcissistic. Um, my name is Todd. <laughs> ah! why, why do you... Things I want you to notice here. Notice I'm assertive, notice I'm playful, and notice I'm very willing to get very physical early on. In these more loud, kind of dance clubby type situations, you do need to get more physical more quickly. All right? Um, it's just one more channel you can communicate on, the fact that you're good physically, the fact that you can touch her and make it feel good. Also, it, it just forces her attention on you more so, right? It's one more way to keep her attention, which again is the prime goal, right? The prime goal in the first minute or so in these kind of situations, attention on you. I love that so much, other than yeah, the fact that this, I'm amazing. This but... girl, like my best friend, like uh -huh. her mom's like kind of boyfriend is named Todd, so like, yeah, that's why. Really? I love it, I love it. Is he hot? Do you have a crush on him? Um, no, but maybe I have a crush on you. Ooh. I mean, I like you as well. I just met you, so. Yeah, true. Let's Same. take it slow, so, but I do like yeah. you too. Yeah, I agree, slow. I like that you seem fun. Really, I mean, you're also cute, but I like that you seem fun. To be honest. I feel like... So that's just a case of reading the signals, right? She was like already giving me the look. She was already leaning in. I'd have to be dumb not to kiss her at this point, right? And it looks like, oh shit, she was so down to kiss you. It happened so fast. And yes, in a way you could read it that way. But why was that the case? It's because I did a lot of things right. I approached in a good way. I got physical. It felt good. My banter was good. I was lighthearted, right? So there's a lot of things I did right now. If you do everything right, are you going to get a quick makeout every single time? No. But if you do a lot of things wrong, you're pretty much guaranteed not to get the quick makeout or any makeout at all. All right. So, um, and for, for any of you who have gone out and you know, you start and you're, you have a lot of trouble kissing or you, you'll know that even for girls that are down, right. Or even for the idea that some girls in the night are down, it's not as easy as it might be. So there's always a skill level. There's always like a sort of randomness or luck factor, but the more skillful you are, the more the luck's just going to work out for you on a continual basis. Yeah, you're not so bad. I 
have to tell you though, I usually don't fall for girls this quickly. I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> Why? Why? Because uh, I'm very difficult. I have very high standards. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. I kind of want to girls' perspective, though, you know? Oh, really? It's a little, I think it's a little different. Oh, yeah? You know? I mean, you're a good kisser, so that helps. Exactly. It didn't hurt. Yeah, it didn't hurt. Don't get greedy. I just met you. I know. I mean, I want to kiss you, too, but if I keep doing that, then I'm going to really get turned on. <laughs> and then, as smart as I am, I might make silly decisions <laughs> that yeah, we totally cool. enjoy and not regret, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so again, enjoy the specific lines. Use the specific lines. But what I want you to notice is the vibe, okay? The vibe is extremely sexual, but extraordinarily not needy. And what I'm really doing is I'm stealing her frame, okay? So typically, the girl is going to be the one getting caught up in the moment, getting very aroused, but putting up the walls and putting up the objections. And so I'm kind of doing that first, right? I'm being the one that's like, oh, it's so good. I'm so tempted, but we can't right? Because I did that first, now she can't do it. This is called um, covering the exits, right? Basically, you know all the objections you're going to get, you can give them first, and then they kind of go away, right? It's also a great way to build sexual tension because you're, you're talking about sex, you're doing physical things to her body, you're making out with her, but then there's that little bit of push away, that little bit of she doesn't know she can have you, you're playing hard to get, etc. right? And it doesn't have to be a lot. It only has to be a little bit. There just has to be that little bit of doubt in her mind. Now, what am I going to do with you? I kind of want to take you on a little New Orleans adventure. That'd be so fun, honestly. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Um, I can do it, but I have friends here, so I have to be back in like a few minutes. So I can take you a little quickly. But Are you talking friends. about right now? Oh, no. Right now, I had to stay with these girls, right. I, I swear to you. But well, like, good. Like I said, but I have like friends here, too. Anytime, like, during the day, like... You want to meet up, like, or something, or, like, in the evening or something, like... My yeah, darling, are you, are you inviting me on a date? I'm so flattered. No, 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 no. I, I think you're getting the wrong idea. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So your, your, your intentions are not romantic with me? I'm a little hurt. I mean, I'm just saying that's not what I'm You just want to, like, get together after. and talk finance and stuff? I'm not opposed to that. I'm just saying you're the man. I'm waiting for you to make the move. Oh, yeah? And I kind of don't. But what if when we hang out? So what you just saw there is one of my favorite moves. You've seen it a few times also here, which is leaning in like as though I'm gonna kiss and then pulling away, right? Nothing says tease like that. Nothing says, oh shit, does this guy really like me or not, right? Um, the ideal way for physical escalation to happen is for her to be escalating on you more than you're escalating on her, and this is a great way for that to happen. Tonight, tomorrow, whenever I tease and torment you, and make you want me oh so bad. We'll see. Okay. Everybody. Where about y'all go to school? Yep. That's why you're so sweet. Yeah. But I'm no. So don't fuck with me, okay? Don't fuck with me. Oh yeah, there'll be no fucking going on. See, but I'm from New York, though. I'm probably too evil for you. Hmm. All right. So. You should yeah, introduce me to your friends so they know I'm like, okay. No, no, uh, so otherwise, I feel like they're going to yank you away from me at some point. They'll be like, no, you can't have her. No, honestly, I don't let them control me. Yeah? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't put up with that shit. Okay. You're an independent woman. Yes. Always. Massive respect for that. Thank you. That's, that's rare at your Like, age. I used to hook up with that girl right next to me. Like, I don't, like, yeah, she tells me what to do, but like, here, I'm gonna do it on you. Did she tell you? 
I want you to choke me. I want you to smack my ass. You want me to? Huh? I was asking if that's what she said. No, she did smack my ass, so. Like, and that's all. That's all possible. Let's do that in private. <laughs> no, she did though. Yeah. Like smack my ass, but it's fine. I like it. Yeah. So what if, in the most sweet, romantic, not platonic, but not necessarily sexual way, I was like, I just want to get to know you this evening and keep you for the next, I don't know, few hours as someone who intrigues me. How do you feel about this? You're asking for the next few hours? I mean, let's start with one and go from there. Let's hope we don't bore each other in that first hour. Okay, I'll be honest, you can have me at this bar right now, but this is my first night here, uh-huh. and we just drove in from last night, so I gotta be with my homegirls as much as I hate or like am annoyed with one one of them. But like, I do have to stick with them. Like I'm staying with one of their fa- at one of their father's places, so so I'll hang with you right now, a hundred percent. But I do have to go with them. Oh, you know, I wasn't trying like, to keep you all yeah. night. I mean, yeah, that's, that's such a commitment. I, w- I would have kicked you out eventually. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, makes sense, you know, makes sense. Makes sense. But, uh, makes anyway. Sense. Hello. Talking to someone. So again, we see we have a logistical issue, right? Um, in this case, there's kind of a double logistical issue. One is you're staying with the one of their friend's fathers. So if you don't get home, it's like got to maybe reflect back to your parents. And, she, you know, it's it's... There's, there's some social consequence there that she has to deal with. The other one is she used to hook up with this this other girl, which may or may not be an issue, but you have to assume there's going to be some amount of jealousy potentially there as well. So the logistics just got really, really bad. Um, but again, you can see how bought in she is, how into me she is, that kind of stuff, and how, again, she's the one chasing. That's the big point I want to make to you in both of these cases is the girl is the one chasing. I flipped the script, and I'm the one that gets to play it cool. I'm the one that gets to be high value, and they're the one that's chasing, being needy, those kind of things. Yeah, she's pissed, so... Uh, fair enough. Yeah. You do seem... How long do I think too untoward? Because you have a jacket to cover it. But I do like your skin. It's very soft and smooth. Really? Thank you. Do you want to kiss me? Yeah. Say Todd, I think you're really hot and I want to kiss you. Todd, I just want to kiss you. You just want to kiss me? I guess all I had to say. Yeah, of course you're hot. Like, sure, yeah. That's all right. I want to kiss you. We got there eventually. So that whole tell me, Todd, I think you're hot, I want you to kiss me, that kind of thing. That's called getting a decision. You may notice in my hooky model, focus, relevance, emotion, decision, right? When, you, when she's saying things like that, she has made a logical decision. She's no longer emotionally in the moment, I'm feeling whatever. She's like decided, right? And you notice even as much as she likes me, she's like resisting a little part of it, right? She's like, oh, I don't want to completely give in. But when she does give in, like, I don't want to say you own her because that sounds a little intense, but you kind of do, right? Like she is yours when she's, when she's bought in on that logical level. When it's just emotional, anything can happen. I'm not good at communication, okay? You seem alright so far. What were the things I would do with you? I'm not good at communication, okay? You seem alright so far. What were the things I would do with you?
So you can tell by her getting hit in the face by a water bottle that the friend is, is not really tolerated anymore. And I tried to mitigate this, right? I tried to be like, hey, introduce me to your friends, etc. But it's a situation where the friends probably were not gonna warm to me no matter what, right? It's kind of like, look, if, if a girl's with just like casual friends, you could win them over. But if a girl's with like her ex-boyfriend who like still wants her, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not winning him over because he's just gonna be jealous. He's just gonna, he, he's like, he has a horse in the race, right? He, he has an incentive, he has a, an ulterior motive. This other girl has an ulterior motive, so of course she's being a little pissy, etc. So not a lot you can do about that. And had I been introduced to her, she probably just would have been a bitch to be anyway. Because again, it's not about how cool I am, it's about she has an agenda, All right? So these things happen sometimes. But again, the key element, the key lesson here is getting the girl to chase, which you're clearly seeing. Do you get my number? Obviously she wants to fucking go. Yeah, what about you guys saying? Um, I will get your number, but what about you guys saying? Um, St. Charles to like... Yeah, I'm close to you. I'm like three blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please text me, okay? I will. Go, okay? I will for sure. So again, you see her number closing me. Now, obviously, she's getting dragged away by her friend, but even there, she tells her friend, hang on. She goes back, gets my number, whatever, takes whatever social consequences there will be, because there will be social consequences for that, but she wants it badly enough that um, she wants to make sure it happens, right? And again, the key theme here is the girls chasing me, the girls closing me, the girls pursuing me. And that's the fundamental shift between intermediate game and advanced game, and that's what I want you to pick up from all of this.